you know, that offense being so proficient, especially because you had to share a quarterback, a man who you had an incredible relationship with. I think you two, closest of friends, been through it together. But there's that one moment that a lot of people like to reference because it's viral on the internet. I just blocked, Jeff! Yeah, that whole sideline interaction. <laughs> how often did that happen? And how quickly after that did you guys say, okay, we just got caught both mic'd up in a terrible situation? You know what I mean? How, how often did that happen? It happened all the time. In practice, it happened weekly, right? Like we'd be in heated arguments all the time about what we should do, what call we should make, uh, all, all of those things. And it happened in games as well. Uh, the greatest part, and, you know, they, and they when they show it, right? They always make the quarterback look good, right? And again, man, it is what it is, right? He he, uh, you know, he comes down and we get at it, but after it, we go down the next time and we run it and we score. And and there's a little they cut to it like we hug up. So we we had hugged up the very next series because the sense had come back to him and he understood the smartest guy on the field was a guy in front of him, right? <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I tell people all the time that I've carried two, you know, two quarterbacks to the Hall of Fame. If you're going to get behind somebody, I'm the guy, right? Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. How did the, how did your relationship with Peyton start, right? Because you were undrafted or fifth round or sixth round or I forget what it was. I don't know. I don't remember out of North Carolina. But then you somehow, because that's a big decision by Peyton. And Peyton is a guy who makes decisions, by the way, especially who's going to be his center. And I wasn't there for it, obviously. I was at the tail end of it. But a lot of people said, like, hey, Peyton, like, I don't want to say hand picked Jeff but was like hey Jeff's my guy almost what was that relationship like at the beginning and were you undrafted I forget the the whole yeah. story yeah I was undrafted and I actually played guard my first year with the Colts I played I, I started a couple games at left guard when Steve McKinney went down with a, an emergency appendectomy and then I rotated uh over at right guard and um but Peyton and I I began to kind of work in Howard Mudd gave me some cuts at the center position and then we battled it out my second year, Larry Moore, who was a starting center. And, uh, man, it just fits my personality, right? I like to talk. I like I like to kind of boss people around and tell people where to go. I'm not scared to make a mistake. Um, so all those things kind of fit, man. And, and Peyton's one of those guys, and you know it, and I do. Like, he wants accountability, and he wants somebody to kind of come back at him. And, and I was never afraid to, uh, to go back at him and be like, hey, bro, this ain't right, or this isn't. And, and that relationship, man, it, when it started uh, way back in 2000, you know, he always had my back, man. It wasn't always perfect, but, brother, we may get after each other, but we knew at the end of the day we were both working to be the best. And I think that's how the best relationships are forged, man, accountability to each other. And understand that, man, when we screw it up, own it, and must move on. I think getting a chance to be around guys like you and Peyton uh, in my rookie year in the NFL, seeing the interactions, and then getting a chance to experience some of like Peyton's life, your life, and everything like that, that taught me so much going forward that like some of the most competitive people who are in yeah. some very powerful positions, they wanted to be they want to be talked to just like how you would talk to your friends if they were fucking up, basically. Like that is, I think, what I learned the most carrying into the business world. So anytime there's somebody of power potentially that walks through a room, there is zero sense of fear because I'm like, hey, this person is exactly like I am probably and how a lot of people I'm friends with, they just want to be talked to. And if they're wrong, they want to hear it too. Like they would like to hear it and then fix it. But if they're not wrong and you tell them they're wrong, now you're in fucking trouble. Now, you know, that is, that is when it becomes a, a whole situation there. I was very lucky to be a part of your team.